the end of stage two minus the initial velocity at the beginning of stage one over the total time. Okay, so it's the final velocity, this one, negative 180 minus the initial velocity over the total time for the whole path. So that one is going to be negative 180 minus uh, the first one was 70 over the total time. Now we had the total time figured out the other day was some kind of a, a fraction, right? What was that fraction? One something. Anyone have that? Over. This is hours. This is mile per hour. This will give you the overall total acceleration during the whole path. Okay, calculate that. Give me the answer in two decimal digits. Okay, it's negative, right? Negative miles per hour squared. So what the average acceleration total, this one is uh, J uh, uh, I hat, right? What the average acceleration total is telling you is that on the average, the car was accelerating to the left at that uh, magnitude. Now, another way to understand average acceleration is by the equation F equals MA. Okay? When I'm asking what is the average acceleration in each stage, I'm kind of also asking what is the average force on the car in each stage. Right? The average force of the car on the car in stage one is the mass of the car times average acceleration in stage one. Okay? So the average acceleration stage one is uh, negative 98. So in stage one, there has to be a force this way that is stopping the car. And that's provided by the brakes. When you hit the brakes, it stops it, uh, the car with, uh, on the tires. And then over here, when you're going this way, you also need a force to cause it to accelerate A2. And that force is equal to provided by the what? You hit the, starts with G, gas pedal, right? Hit the gas pedal, accelerate, and it provided, that force is provided by the engines of the car, okay? So, that's, now when I'm asking A average total, I'm also kind of asking what is the average total force, MA total, and notice that the A average total is negative 115. It's actually much closer to A average 1. Uh, A average 2 was negative 405. A average, uh, tot uh, A average total is negative 115, so it's much closer to A average 1. So what that means is, on the average, since you stopped here and then you went, that average is out the the total force that is required on your car, okay? Because while you're stopping, is there any force required on your car? Not really, right? You stop, the car is standing still, the force on the car is zero while standing still. You're drinking coffee or whatever you're doing. The, the average force on the car is zero over here, so that causes the total average acceleration to be much closer to A average one. Okay, now that we've calculated all this, let's do the graphs. Remember, we're going to graph x versus t, v versus t, s versus t, a versus t. And after we do, we're done with this problem, then we're going to do a similar problem, which is not, uh, that one is going to require us to use some calculus. That one is going to be a little bit different, but we're going to do the similar things to that problem. Okay.
So you know what? Let's start on this side here. To this one is going to be the graph of x versus t. When we're graphing x versus t, we're saying, okay, where is the position of the car as a function of time? Okay. So the, let's assume the car starts at the or let's call that the origin right there. So the car starts at the origin. And the car travels 50 miles in 5 sevenths of an hour. So let's just say maybe, let's say this is one hour, two hour, three hour. So I'm trying to make it kind of uh, symmetrical here to scale. So 5 sevenths of an hour, maybe something like this. This is. Five sevenths of an hour. Right? So the car, as the car is moving forward, time is moving forward too. So the car is going like that. Then over here, the car stops for one hour. So it should take you somewhere about here. See, so one hour takes you right there. Then the car goes four ninths of an hour, which takes us somewhere about here. So the total time should be two and something, something small number, right? So by the time it gets right here, so where does it end up? At a negative 30, right? It goes back 80, so its final position is negative 30. So to scale, that would look somewhere about here. So by the time you get to two and something hours, now it looks from this that it crosses the origin at t equals to 2. Now, I'm not sure about that because we haven't found that out. So that's not that important. And the car probably keeps going right there. We don't know what happens to it. So anyway, I'll just put an arrow like that. So this is what it means to draw x versus t. It's the position of the car as a function of time. OK? Now, one of the reasons we also do this is we can, we can now analyze the graphical meaning of each of the things that we found. Remember, we found the average speed in stage one was 70 miles an hour. And the average velocity in stage one was positive 70 miles an hour. Now, using the fact that average velocity is the, the velocity is the derivative of the speed, that means the graphical meaning of average velocity, if you take the slope of this line, now since the line is a straight line, I can take the slope between any two points. Right? And I can choose any two points, and I could do rise over run. And I could use a little different color here. This part of the test, if I ask this question to you, which I'm likely to ask, and I'm going to ask you to do this graph and then do the slopes. So you can have a colored pencil or colored pens, you know, then you can show each one with different color. Like the, here's the average velocity in stage one. It's, that's represented by the slope of the x. And then the slope of the second one right here, any two points. Average velocity in stage two, which is negative. Uh, 180. Now, your graph should also bear that out. Notice this is much steeper than that. If you do a good graph, this one is uh, less steep. This one is way steep, you know. Now,